welcome to Arts 101 for the month of July. Thank you so much for tuning into the program, brought to you by CMAP in partnership with Out and About Magazine. Tonight, I regret to announce that I shall be leaving the show due to the fact that I am moving to attend UC Berkeley in the fall. However, I have enjoyed my time here very, very much. So, I would like to thank the producer, Spencer Wilkinson, for giving me this opportunity. And I would like to thank our viewers for watching the show. Now, our first segment by Val Jeffrey brings you the art of photography featuring local photographer Noella Vigeant. You feel the inspiration and experience her talent in action. We thank Noella for the use of her wonderful photographs. So, without further ado, I present to you Focus on Photographer Noella Vigeant. My name is Noella Vigeant. I am a photographer. I live here in Gilroy, which is where I do a lot of my work. I also teach here in Gilroy at Gavilan College and a couple other schools, but this is one of my main places where I teach. I teach photography, both the camera, how to use it, how to do different styles of photography, and the post-processing of photography. So the Photoshop, um, some printing techniques, and um, how to work with people, how to work with subjects. What can you see? I am zooming right in on those blooms. They're really interesting. I even got a little bee up there. How cool is that? The subjects that I typically lean toward in nature would be trees. There is just something about trees that I find fascinating. I have been working on a project to photograph oak trees. I thought it would last me one winter, but I'm on winter four now, and I think I will probably photograph for another two winters before I feel like I've captured enough winter oaks. So how, how did you get into photography? I got into photography um, through osmosis, I think. Uh, there was always cameras around when I was growing up. My grandfather had a camera and I can, oh, I just loved looking at pictures all, as growing up. My grandmother taught my, my father how to take pictures and develop pictures. And then my father in turn taught me how to do it. And I think that it, I just stayed with photography. At one point in my life, I got to make a decision. Do I want to work for corporate America or do I want to do something that I love? And that was where it went. I had the opportunity to take stills on a feature film. And it was one of the greatest experiences for me. First off, because no matter where we shot, the lighting was perfect, which is a big struggle when you don't have a studio and you're out photographing in nature, which is where I take a lot of my pictures. Uh, so that made it really exciting. Also, the fact that I was working with artists, I was working with not just one artist, I was working with an entire cast and crew of artists, and that make, made photography a lot, a lot of fun. My favorite picture from working on that feature film is a photograph of the director. He was, you know, often very pensive and thought, thinking through and how to catch his, his idea onto film. And I have one picture in particular that I really like of him. It's, it, he almost looks like Hitchcock in the picture. It's a profile of him. And I, that's my favorite photograph from that shoot. When I'm about to photograph a subject, uh, my first thing is to kind of get to know their, their expressions. So I will often ask questions to elicit either a silly smile or something serious, just so I can get a feel for what they're going to look like in front of my camera before I even pull the camera up. And then, when like an environment such as this, like at Gavilan, I will start looking for a texture or a backdrop that's going to complement my subject. Here, my subject, um, today I have a subject who's wearing a black shirt, so, and it's very plain. So I'll start looking for some textures to kind of complement or to create a more interesting image. With this tree, what I'd like you to do is, is lean on it. So, be relaxed. 
Maybe even put this foot up here so that you feel comfortable. Okay, close your eyes, take a nice big breath. Really long. Okay, do that again. Thank you. I feel like I'm in heaven when I have someone like this in front of my camera. <laughs> she's got the greatest smile. <laughs> and she's perfect. Oh yeah. <laughs> In a location like this, uh, on a campus like this, uh, where the, I have a variety of backdrops, I will move my subject from one place to another so that they get uh, a break from being in front of the camera, but also it gives us a nice variety of images to look at afterwards. Sometimes my instincts toward uh, one backdrop is great, but it may not come across well with my subject, so that also gives me a choice of finding some um, some better captures of my subject. The wind is going to blow your hair, so, and the, because the light's coming behind it, it's going um, to be nice. Did you feel comfortable with Noella? Yes, I felt at ease with her. My job as a photographer is to be the memory maker, the person who records the moment in time, and that's not always just people. Even though I photograph a lot of families, a lot of individuals, I look at it as the trees that I photograph are also the family that I photograph. And over time, I am taking a piece of history of whether it's a child, a family, or a tree, and I'm recording it. Thank you to Noella for showcasing her wonderful photographs and sharing our Arts 101 audience the wonderful tips for making your photography models more comfortable. In addition, we would like to thank Val Jeffrey for the segment and Val's granddaughter, Sydney, for being Noella's model for the segment. Now, I would like to introduce the new host for Arts 101, Melissa Alvarado. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you. It's an honor to take over the Arts 101 show. Each month, I'm on a mission searching for my next art discovery. This month, I discovered the Mushroom Mardi Gras Festival in Morgan Hill. The festival is a family-friendly event and is a favorite of mushroom lovers. Take a look. I'm Melissa Alvarado and I'm at the Morgan Hill Community and Cultural Center at the 32nd Annual Mushroom Mardi Gras. This two-day event will feature live entertainment, arts, crafts, gourmet food, and of course, mushrooms. Let's go inside, take a look at what the festival has in store for us. I'm here with Shelly, who is an employee of the Monterey Mushroom family. Shelly, can you tell us a little bit about your role with Monterey Mushrooms and what the the most popular mushroom is. Sure, I, I work for the Spawn Company, which is the seed company for Monterey Mushrooms. And the most um, popular mushroom is the white button mushroom or the brown portobello mushroom. Okay, great. And which is your favorite? The white. So let's go over and take a taste of the white button mushroom. Here we go, taste. Excellent. Those are marinated by Monterey Mushrooms. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. I'm here with Ruby and Yvette. So girls, how are you guys liking the setup this year for the Mushroom Mardi Gras Festival? Um, we like the setup this year much better than last year. It's nice and laid out the right way it should be. Much more people and easy to find. Yes, and the food is much more accessible, which we always love. That is always a plus, especially when the beer tents are right there. Right. <laughs> what is your favorite uh, item here to have? Tri-tip sandwich. Yes, definitely, and the calamari, Monterey, homegrown. Yeah. Thank you so much, enjoy the day. Thank you. I'm here with Stephanie and Sarah. Let's talk to them and see how they're enjoying today's event. All right, you guys, so how far did you travel to be here today? Uh, about half a mile. Yeah, I haven't traveled very far. We walked here, actually. All right, okay, so didn't travel very far, that's okay. So is this your first Mushroom Mardi Gras festival? 
Uh, no, it's probably my fourth or fifth. And it's only my second. So what do you guys like best about mushrooms? And which is your favorite mushroom if you have one? I'd have to say the stuffed mushrooms with the cheese. Oh my gosh, those are to die for. I would say the same, the stuffed mushrooms. That's great, sounds good to me. How about you? Do you like mushrooms? Do you like mushrooms? <laughs> she likes mushrooms, all right. Thank you so much. I'm here with Michaela and Kiana, two lovely sisters. So girls, what are you guys drinking? Um, we're drinking a Volcano Splash drink. And what flavor is yours? Um, raspberry. And yours? Cherry Blast. And have you had these before? No. What is your favorite part about the Mushroom Mardi Gras Festival? Uh, just walking around and like buying stuff. Mine too. And your favorite part about the festival? To have fun with my family. All right. Thank you girls so much. I'm here with Lee, one of the artists for LD Art Studio. Um, as you can see, we have his beautiful artwork behind us. Lee, can you, um, you're welcome, can you tell us a little bit about your inspiration for your work? Well, um, I love people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love beautiful people. Great. Yeah. Uh, and how old were you when you first started um, painting? Uh, since I was seven years old, but I went to college, you know, in China. Great. So, do you have you have a background then in art, correct? Yes. Uh, yes. Shanghai Art College in China. Excellent. And what would you say throughout the years is your favorite piece? My favorite piece? Let me show you. Sure. Okay. That'd be great. Okay. So this is Lee's favorite piece of artwork. Now, why is this your favorite piece? Because I love the guy, and I love the way I did that. You know. What do you want people to take from this painting when they see this? I think everybody have a different feeling when they, when they saw the piece of art, you know? Yeah. But I, I just love the guy, too, you know? That's true. Everybody does have their own interpretation of art. If you've never been to the Mushroom Mardi Gras Festival, be sure to check it out next year. It always lands on Memorial Weekend. This year, it turns out there was a greater variety in vendors, live entertainment, gourmet food, and arts and crafts. I'm Melissa Alvarado, reporting from the Morgan Hill Community and Cultural Center. Thank you for watching. Adios. Tonight, we welcome James Avina, the vocalist and guitar player for the J.J. Hogg Band. The J.J. Hogg Band members are all family men who lead busy lives, but when they come to the stage, they come with fury. So, I welcome to the show, James Avina. How you doing? Good. Good. Thank you so much for coming on the show, James. I Thank really you for having me. Um, so the first question I want to ask you is, um, tell me a little bit about your band. Uh, how you guys got started? Well, uh, we were all members of other bands, and uh, we were friends. And one day we jammed and decided, hey, you know, we got we got a good sound, got something going, and decided to you know to start a band. And then over the years, you know, changing members, uh, you know, other other members came in that we picked up along mm -hmm. along the way, and uh, just haven't stopped since. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And um, now. I ask this question often, and it's a little bit ridiculous and kind of absurd to ask you to do this, but um, if you could classify your music, uh, what would you classify under? Or, or perhaps better, um, maybe what were some influences, uh, just your style of music, if you could talk to me a little bit about it. Well, we're kind of classified as a classic rock band mm -hmm. uh, when we do covers and things like that. It's more classic rock, but our original music is, uh, there's a lot of influences uh, that I've had over the years, uh, heavy rock, heavy metal, uh, blues, country, you know, some contemporary stuff. Right. And I tend not to write the same way. I have a lot of different ways of writing, so uh, there's a lot of different styles that come out. So I, I couldn't really tell you, as far as my original music, what right. <laughs> one style. Yeah, it's, it's just so, 
uh, it varies. Right. It's, it's, it's like this blend. Um, so you write all your music or you write some and you also do some covers, is, is that? We do covers for the local clubs and uh -huh. uh, you know festivals and things like that. But we, uh, we also have a CD out called Real Good Lover. Oh. Uh, it was all original. Uh, that's been out for quite a while. We, we don't promote that too much anymore, but uh, some of the original members were, were talking about playing a few of them. So. Uh, I think we might start pulling that stuff out again in our live shows. Oh, great. And we're kind of hoping to do some shows where uh, it would just involve original music and mm -hmm. we'd like to get it out there. So. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you said you play festivals, right? Festivals, festivals. and you play at some um, restaurants and things of that nature. Uh, what are some shows you've paid, uh, played in the past that you really enjoy or kind of... Well. Uh, we do like the garlic festivals uh -huh. and a lot of the local Morgan Hill and Gilroy uh, downtown street festivals. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know we play in a number of cities. We also uh, uh, we're opening bands for um, national acts such as like Cheap Trick, and we've opened up for like Eddie Money, Ronnie Montrose, Pat Travers, Starship. Oh, wow. So we've we've been around the block. We're yeah. all seasoned musicians, and uh, we don't do that too much of that anymore. Um, as we get older, we're not really too much, you know, interested in fame and fortune. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just uh, trying to pay the bills, have a good time. Or uh, some of us have full-time jobs. I do it for a living, so that's it's kind of my my job. I oh gotta, wow! I got to go out there and hustle up and look for the gigs. Yeah. Uh, the other two members, you know, they have incomes. So, uh, but I'm getting by, and it's it's fun. You know, I I don't have anybody telling me, hey, it's time to get up to go to work. Right, I get yeah, it when yeah. I want. So. <laughs> So it's been it's been real nice. That's amazing. Now I, I spoke with you before the show, and you said you've worked uh, for for a couple organizations before, right? Yes, um, we've played for like the Relay for Life, American Cancer Society. Right. Uh, I was also the entertainment chair for the last two years, uh, and uh, we we actually do like a lot of the car shows that are in in the area. We just finished oh, okay. doing the. Uh, Robert Guerrero Day uh, for the Cancer and Lymphoma oh, yeah. Foundation. And then um, we just finished doing this last weekend for the Garlic Festival Fun Run here in Gilroy. Uh, and you know, the, you know, the Garlic Festival raises all that money and goes to organizations mm -hmm. that they, they allocate the funds to. So we were out there supporting the cause and, and uh, you know, we try to do, give back, do benefits when we can. Brilliant, uh, very, very honorable. So like you told me, this. This is your job, which is great because you love it. What is it that you love about arts, or, or more specifically, music? Uh, what is it that draws you? Uh, where does this passion stem from? Well, music, in my opinion, can heal. It can heal people, you know? I mean, uh, they use it in various programs to go into hospitals and convalescent homes to, uh, uh, I guess, get you know re reactions and how would you put it like you know Something for people moving. that normally wouldn't get that mm -hmm. uh we bring it to them so that and and the smiles it brings smiles to people's faces and and uh, some of my original music um that i've written over the years i mean i've i've played live and i've actually witnessed people uh like some of the sad songs of things that happened in my life or uh, other people's lives that i wrote about you know, I've seen people crying. Uh, I see cool. people having a great time dancing to, mm -hmm. the, to the music. And then also, too, what, what, what's really nice is when we go to the festivals and you have parents there and you see their kids out there and their little two, three, four-year-olds mm -hmm. are out there just shaking it and having a great time. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it, it brings a smile to my face to know that I can, I can do that. I know you can't please everybody, but as long as I can please just one person at a gig, <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> well... Tr truly brilliant. Every everything you say just uh, amazes me. Now, if our viewers, if they're looking for your music, or if they want to hire you uh, for a gig or anything of that nature, find out more information on you, uh, what should they do? Uh, you can go to our website, which is uh, www.jjhogband.com, and that's uh, spelled, hog is spelled with H-A-W-G. Okay. So uh, www jjhogband.com and then you, there's a menu on there you can go, uh, you can contact us, you can see videos, pictures, uh, what music we do play. Uh, you, you, there's, it's just self-explanatory, it's all right there. And 
there's even a, a, a link where you can download our original music oh, and, okay. and stuff that we've recorded over the years. So uh, check it out. It's, it's a great site. I've been working on it for a while. <laughs> okay. James, thank you so much for coming on the Thank show. you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you so much. And we hope to see you all out there at some of our gigs in the future. So. <laughs> <laughs> James Avina for coming on the show. Next we have for you the July Arts 101 calendar, a partnership between CMAP and Out and About Magazine. Bienvenidos, welcome. I'm Melissa Alvarado and this is your Arts 101 July calendar brought to you by CMAP and Out and About Magazine. First up, July 1st through the 2nd and July 8th through the 9th, the Limelight Actors Theater presents Norman, Is That You? A comedy by Ron Clark and Sam Bobrick. This is a bring your own dinner event. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. and the show will start at 8 p.m. This event will be held at the Gilroy Center for the Arts. For more information, please call 408-472-3292. And July 1st through August 18th, the Centennial Recreation Senior Center in Morgan Hill will feature and art exhibit. For more information, please call 408-310-4255. And on July 2nd, 23rd, and August 13th, the Guerra Family Cellars brings you the Hollister Concerts on the Green and Pepper Tree Ranch. This event will feature bands such as Great Freedom Concert Fandango, The Refugees and Midlife Vices, The Marshall Tucker Band, Brad Wilson, and the Robert Berry Band. For more information, please visit www.hollisterconcerts.com. And on Thursday, July 9th, at the Gilroy Center for the Arts, And on Thursday, July 9th, the Gilroy Center for the Arts presents The Art of Our Mothers and Fathers. This event is a special eclectic exhibit of items made by parents of local residents. For more information, please call 408-842-6999. And on Saturday, July 16th, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., the Hollister Downtown Association brings you the 25th Anniversary Street Festival and Car Show. This event is not to be missed and is for all you car enthusiasts and members of the community. Next, the Gilroy Downtown Business Association brings you the 5th Street Live Music in downtown Gilroy. This event will take place throughout the summer and is free. 
For more information, please visit www.gilroyartalliance.com. Also in Gilroy, the Gilroy Library will present Teen Summer Reading Club. Sign-ups are through August 31st, and teens can also sign up at www.santaclaralib.org. Don't miss this opportunity to win great prizes just for registering. And on July 21st through the 24th, the California Rodeo Salinas will take place at the Salinas Sports Complex in Salinas. Bareback brawl and bull riding, calf roping, steer wrestling, cattle cutting, and barrel racing will be at their finest, along with barbecues, parades, and country western entertainment. For more information, please visit www.carodeo.com. And July 28th is the Gilroy Garlic Festival kickoff party featuring the band Free Sound from Hawaii at the Lizeron Tapas restaurant. For more information, please visit www.lizeron.ca.com. And July 29th through the 31st, the Gilroy Garlic Festival features fresh garlic, three stages of musical entertainment, arts and crafts, and cooking demonstrations at Christmas Hill Park in Gilroy. For more information, please visit www.gilroygarlicfestival.com. And don't forget to watch CMAP's coverage of the Gilroy Garlic Festival at www.cmap.tv. If you would like to volunteer for the Gilroy Garlic Festival with CMAP, please contact the office at 408-846-4983. This has been your Arts 101 calendar for July. If you would like to add something to the August calendar, please contact info at outandaboutmagazine.com. I'm Melissa Alvarado, and please have a safe and happy 4th of July. And remember to have an art-filled month. Adios. Before I leave, I would like to end on a personal note. Mathematics and science are indeed vital, but the arts provide an indispensable outlet of imagination to our youth. And without the arts, without the free, creative, roving mind, all hopes of a brighter, better future are rendered impossible. So please, always support the arts. Thank you. Ah, flowers. I love flowers. Thank you.